the new Ryzen 9 5900X is out. This is a 12 core, 24 thread processor, and we're gonna compare it to the old Ryzen 9 3900X, also 12 cores and 24 threads, but AMD promises more IPC uplift, and that's through more cores on one CCX. So I'm super excited. They're actually claiming to be even better than Intel and single core performance, which is also gonna make them the gaming king in processors. So I'm super excited to see what kind of performance we can see out of this. Now, I don't have any Intel processors on hand in order to compare the performance between this 5900X and another Intel processor, but a lot of reviewers are gonna have those processors and they have already released some of those reviews and spoiler alert, all of the Ryzen 5000 series, even the 5600X, is killing the 10900K in a lot of single core performances. Some differences this year, the new Ryzen processors are a lot more expensive than you might remember. For example, the 5600X is already $300. This 5900X that I have here was $550. And if you can look at the box, I think the 3900X, which came in this box here, it was definitely a much more premium looking box. Uh, looks like you're gonna get like the best performance just by looking at the box. Here we have this Ryzen 9 5900X box, really nice and tiny. But this one came with the Wraith's Prism cooler. This one doesn't come with a cooler at all. So now we're looking at that argument between Intel and AMD. Well, AMD comes with a really good cooler, not anymore. So you lose that value and they're more expensive this time. So they better make up for it in the performance. So soon we're gonna be going over those benchmarks and see if the performance uplift is gonna be worth the loss in value. Now, a lot of the changes in these new Ryzen processors are gonna come from architectural changes on the die, which I already mentioned, the core complexes having more cores in them. So that Infinity Fabric is not gonna offer any latency issues on these chips like they did in the Ryzen 3000 series, and that's gonna be where most of our performance increase is gonna be coming from. Behind me here, you're gonna see my test bench system. I am using the Gigabyte Aorus Pro B550 motherboard. It's kind of one of their budget line boards. You get it for about $180 new. However, I got mine on an open box deal from Micro Center for about $130. So that's about a $50 savings there. It was a complete package, nothing missing out of the box. So I didn't lose anything there. However, I did have to update the BIOS in order to get this working. And luckily the board does have a BIOS flash port on the back of the IO. So it was very simple to do. I did have a little bit of a hiccup, but it was user error. I was able to get it working nonetheless. Cooling my 5900X, I did buy the new Arctic Liquid Freezer 240. Gamers Nexus called this the best AIO and cooler all around. One of the cool things about this Liquid Freezer cooler, it does come with like a little 40 millimeter fan that is gonna cool the VRM temperatures. And it, this Aorus Pro does have a beefy VRM 12 plus two phases, uh, but it does have a finned heat sink and does very well in cooling passively already, but hopefully that little 40 millimeter fan stays quiet and does a good job in cooling our VRMs. And then next for our memory, I have Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB, and they're clocked to 3600 megahertz. And then for the GPU, we have my EVGA XC Ultra 2080 Ti. I tested this all open air, now, I am comparing these results on the 5900X to my old 3900X, which was tested in a Fantex P600S case with full custom loop dual radiators on both the GPU and the CPU were both water-cooled. So there is gonna be a little bit of a difference there, but not much. Stay tuned uh, for a later video where I'm, I am waiting on a new case for this build. Uh, and it'll be coming here in a couple days actually. So soon you'll see a new build on the channel where I actually build this computer. And then in that Fantex P600S, I am gonna keep it water cooled on the processor side. So that way uh, I'm gonna bring back something to the channel that a lot of you have been asking for. Enough of all that crap. 
let's go ahead and get into the benchmarks of this 5900X compared to the 3900X. I did test some pr production benchmarks like the Puget Bench uh, Photoshop benchmark. I also tested DaVinci Resolve. And we obviously have Cinebench and TimeSpy to look at as well. And then we'll get into the gaming benchmarks. So let's go ahead and see how this piece performs. All right, starting off with Cinebench R20. We are looking at the multi-core score first on the 3900X. We had a score of 7,326. And on the 5900X, the multi-core score went up to 8,483. Now, uh, for the single core performance, we uh, have been expecting a great boost in performance like AMD Promise. With the 3900X, it scored a 521 score and the single core performance on the 5900X, 633. So very, very good performance already on the single core performance in Cinebench, uh, but not completely representative of all performances. Let's go ahead and take a look at Time Spy. With the 3900X system, our overall score was 13,746, and our CPU score on that 3900X was 13,051. And for the 5900X, our overall score went up to 13,868, with the CPU at 13,977. Now, looking at some actual benchmarks for production, we have our DaVinci Resolve 4K edit. Again, that's our RTX 3070 review. It took 13 minutes and 17 seconds to render the 4K video that was 18 minutes long. And on the 5900X in DaVinci Resolve, that same exact video took 10 minutes and 24 seconds. So almost a three minute improvement. Super excited about that because it's gonna really speed up my, my production on these videos. And then looking at Photoshop, which is something I'm still trying to learn, definitely when I'm messing around with some of the effects that that program has, the performance uplift in this is going to be substantial. And a lot of the reviews have showed that this is actually better than Intel, which is a new thing for AMD. They've never been able to beat out Intel in Photoshop performance. But again, anyway, this is the Puget Bench benchmark and the 3900X scored a 999 point score and with the 5900X a whopping 1213. So very, very good uplift there. Really impressed so far with the 5900X. Now let's go ahead and get into the gaming benchmarks. For the gaming benchmarks, we are going to go ahead and start off looking at Total Warhammer 2. First off is the 1080p benchmarks. Both 1080p and 1440p were tested at ultra settings without any anti-aliasing and on the DX11 API. Looking at the 3900X at 1080p, we had an average frame rate of 106 frames per second with 1% lows of 72. And on the 5900X, a whopping 132.8 FPS average and a 1% low of 90.6. Excellent, excellent boost in performance there at 1080p. And now looking at 1440p, we have the Ryzen 9 3900X. Again, ultra settings, no anti-aliasing and DirectX 11 API. The 3900X put up at 85.3 FPS with 1% lows of 70.3. And the 5900X had 99.1 FPS average with 1% lows of 76.6. So great performance uplift so far in our first game, Total Warhammer 2. Now we are going to look at the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. First off, again, the 1080p results. These were tested at ultra settings with SMAA 4X anti-aliasing and DirectX 12. With the 3900X, we had an average frame rate of 102.3 and 1% lows of 80.3. And then on the 5900X, we had an average frame rate of 109.2 and 1% lows of 95.2. So not a huge increase there. Uh, a lot of that might've had to do, I probably put too much load on the GPO with the anti-aliasing on there. So that one's probably my fault in this testing methodology. Nonetheless, we do get an uplift there. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the 1440p results. Again, ultra settings with 4X SMAA anti-aliasing and DirectX 12. The Ryzen 9 3900X put up 74 frames per second on average with a 66.41% low. The Ryzen 9 5900X 
That had a average frame rate of 77.6 frames per second with 1% low, so 70.2. All right, now we have Red Dead Redemption 2, starting off at the 1080p results. This was tested in DirectX 12 with high settings and no anti-aliasing. With the Ryzen 9 3900X, we had an average frame rate of 96.7 and 1% low is a 67.4. Going up to the Ryzen 9 5900X, that had an average frame rate of 103.7 and a 1% low of 72.9. So a decent uplift in performance, but so far looking at gaming benchmarks, Looks like the upgrade might not be worth it if you already have a 3000 series processor. This might not be absolutely worth it for you if you're only doing gaming. But moving on to the 1440p results on the Red Dead Redemption 2, again with DirectX 12, high settings, no anti-aliasing. The Ryzen 9 3900X put up average frame rates of 81 with 1% lows of 59. And then with the 5900X, we had average frame rate of 84 and 1% lows is 60.7. All right, now we have Horizon Zero Dawn and we're gonna start off again at the 1080p results, tested at high settings without any anti-aliasing. The Ryzen 9 3900X put up an average frame rate of 101.6 with a 1% low of 85.1. And then looking at the 5900X, we did get a nice boost, about 10 frames per second. Went up to 111.8 frames per second average and 1% lows of 98.3. And now with 1440p results, still the same high settings without anti-aliasing. The Ryzen 9 3900X put up an average frame rate of 79 frames per second and 1% lows of 71.1. And then on the 5900X, we had an average frame rate of 88.1 with 1% lows of 80.4. Now that was actually an interesting result as uh, 1080p is the one that usually puts more load on the CPU than the GPU. And we saw marginally the same performance increase throughout 1080p and 1440p, which is something we haven't seen throughout these games so far. Let's move on to the next game. All right, looking at Hitman 2. This was tested at 1080p with high settings, and I tested this with the Miami benchmark and Ryzen 9 3900X. This had an average frame rate out of 121.7 frames per second with 1% lows of 70.4. Now, with the Ryzen 9 5900X, we had an average frame rate of 164 frames per second with 1% lows of 87.9. Now uh, we have 1440p results, and this had an average frame rate of 117.4 frames per second and 1% lows of 68.8 on the Ryzen 9 3900X. Next, uh, the 5900X at the 1440p result went up to 132.6 frames per second and 1% lows of 83.8. Here's another one where we had a significant performance increase throughout the processors, but also that same increase was across the board in both 1080p and 1440p. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the more popular Call of Duty Warzone. Now I did come up with my own benchmarking spot here in Warzone. I tested the same spot every single time. You'll see that in the gameplay footage, I did capture my benchmarking here. The FPS counter you're seeing on screen is the 1080p FPS, but also while recording. So the FPS you're seeing on screen is not completely representative of the results I am putting here on the chart. That gameplay footage was captured just to show you my benchmarking methodology uh, running around on this one train track in part of Warzone. Starting off here with the 1080p results, Obviously, DirectX 12, that's what Warzone uses. And we have high settings and no anti-aliasing. Our Ryzen 9 3900X put up a pretty good fight at 155.9 frames per second with 1% lows of 104.8. Now, looking at the Ryzen 9 5900X at 1080p, that went up to 166.5 frames per second and had 1% lows of 126.5. So a significant increase there. All right, and looking at the 1440p results on Warzone, same high settings without anti-aliasing. Our Ryzen 9 3900X put up an average frame rate of 128.3 with 1% lows of 102.2. 
And looking at the 5900X, we did get another performance increase up to 134.3 with 1% lows of 112.5. So that's it for all the gaming benchmarks. Let's go back up on top and hear my thoughts on these new Ryzen 5000 processors. All right, guys, you saw those benchmarks. The Ryzen 5000 series is doing an excellent job, as you saw in probably other reviewers, that they were destroying Intel and gaming as well as production workloads, which they've been doing for the past several years now. The gaming results are a significant win for AMD, as they haven't been the gaming king, at, I don't know if ever, uh, but if, if they have ever been, it's been a long time since they have. Uh, so it's very, very cool to see that AMD is winning out over Intel. Sorry that I didn't have any processors to show you that myself, but you did get to see AMD versus AMD with the 3900X versus the 5900X. If you already have a 3900X and you're playing at 1440p like I am, and you're only using your system for gaming, this new processor might not be worth it for you as you're only seeing a, a little bit of an increase in performance. But if you are building a computer for the very first time or upgrading a computer from a long time ago, if you have an old Intel or AMD FX processor or something like that, maybe a Ryzen 1600, these new Ryzen 5000 processors are going to be a great upgrade for you. And it's going to be significant in gaming performance if you are into production workloads with uh, Photoshop, Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, like how I use, then this is also a great, great upgrade for you. Even if you're on the 3900X, I'm super excited about a three minute render time boost in performance. That is excellent. Photoshop is going to be a lot faster for me. I probably won't notice a lot of that until I start getting used to that program. I'm very untrained, as you've probably seen in my thumbnails. Don't really know what I'm doing yet. And those Cinebench single core scores are amazing. Love to see AMD finally getting those single core performances boosted up. And again, that's what that architectural change mostly do to putting more cores on a single CCX, limiting that infinity fabric that definitely lowered the bandwidth quality on our chips. Definitely going to be interesting to see how the gaming performance gets boosted when we compare this processor with one of their new graphics cards, the 6800 XT, where they can start using system memory uh, in order to help performance with uh, gaming. I'm super excited. I'm hoping to get my hands on one of those graphics cards. So all in all, uh, looking at all the reviews from other people like Hardware Unbox, Gamers Nexus, They've mostly said that the 5800X processor is the one that's kind of a bust. It's not a value processor because it is kind of expensive at $450. It looks like the 5600X and the 5900X are going to be the sweet spot for gaming and production. The 5600X is probably going to be light production since it is only a 6-core, 12-thread processor. Uh, but it, that single-core and multi-core score definitely still did a great job compared to Intel and to some of the older Ryzen processors. But with these new processors coming out and the, you're not really impressed by the boost in performance and you still want to upgrade your computer from one of those older processors we discussed earlier, the 3000 series is still is probably going to be seeing a drop in price here soon. Usually with Micro Center, you usually see the, the 3600s go down to about $100. That's, at least that's what they did with their Ryzen 2600s when they were trying to get rid of those. So Ryzen 3000 is a good option for you guys. 5900X and all and the Ryzen 5000 series is a significant win for AMD and I really can't wait to see what they can bring to the table. Especially in the GPU market, they got those coming out here soon and they promised a significant boost in gaming performance when you compare AMD to AMD. So pairing a 5900X with a 6800XT is supposed to be significantly better with their memory sharing. So I really hope that you guys can help me get one of those copies of those graphics cards on launch day and get you guys a really solid review. But I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you liked it, hit that like button, comment, and that really helps out the algorithm. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, so thank you again for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.